And the first objective they get is these massive triangle stacks. I cannot believe Order to Thunder did not contest this, frankly. Like, they steal another ancient stack, which is so sad. I feel so bad for Thunder this game. Oh my. Hey, what is up, guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today I'm excited to talk about Zai's Offlane Coddle. You heard that right, Offlane Coddle, Keeper of the Light. And the, really the main idea behind Offlane Coddle is it's a pretty stable laner, right? Very, very stable laner because of the fact they have Illuminate. Pretty hard to shut down, so very difficult to counterpick, especially in the draft. I really don't think people know what to pick to counterpick it. So you have that going for you. You have a very, very fast-paced tempo. Like, what's interesting about Coddle is the fact that this hero provides a lot of heal once it has its ultimate. If you don't understand what I mean, when you are in your spirit form, right, which is your ultimate, when you're in your spirit form and you hit someone with Illuminate, it heals them for 50% of the Illuminate damage. So let's say you do 500 damage, you can heal for 250. And that's a ton, right? Early on into the game, if you mech and Illuminate, you're healing for 525 health. I mean, that is a wild amount of health. And so we're going to be taking a look at some really big plays. Like there was this one play in particular where he saves Nisha mid when Nisha was getting gone on and Nisha's playing Shadow Fiend, a hero that truly can't disengage. However, he bought just enough time for Nisha to be able to get off Requiem of Souls. And that allows Nisha to turn around the fight and honestly turn around the game in some regard. Not that they were losing, but it really like snowballed the lead for Team Liquid because Nisha would have died completely, like full through would have died. He got ravaged. Uh, <laughs> but still, as I was able to save him, so let's get into it. Also, I want to tell you guys that if you've been struggling with solo queue and you're looking to get to the next rank, I'm going to be able to help you. Like, literally, with the Game Leap website, I'm going to give you guys guides that are going to make it unbelievably clear on what you need to do. So if you've been stuck in the solo queue grind, you don't know what to do, and you want to become absolutely broken, <laughs> but like, actually, you want to become much, much better at Dota, and you want to take it more seriously, the Game Leap website is going to help you do that. So click the link down below. I'm going to help you get to the next rank, and I'll see you there. All right, in terms of laning stage, this hero tends to play relatively passive, pretty even. At 49 damage, you don't last hit very well, and so if you're going to decide to pick this, you have to pull a ton of creep aggro, really just with the intent of, as he even kind of messed up the blast there, yeah. You have to pull a ton of creep aggro, and best case scenario, the enemy pulls aggro, and you pull aggro, because Illuminate is so much damage at level 1, right? It does 185 damage after being channeled for 3 seconds. It's so much damage at level 1, where essentially, if the enemy pulls aggro onto their range creep, you can just channel it when the range creep is two-thirds HP and below and you're gonna be able to secure the creep almost guaranteed. So in terms of the laning stage what Zai is going to be doing is picking up a ring of regen and then essentially from there it's kind of just taking your illuminate spamming your chakra off cooldown and that's most of the pressure you're gonna get. He gets a little bit of aggressive on TA2000 here with the help of the tag team, but this is only because he has a Tusk, right? Tusk is one of those heroes that just amps up a lot of pressure, and I actually really like the lane here from uh, Liquid. Connell's a hero that puts absolutely no pressure on the majority of lanes, from my experience. However, he's actually pretty good at pressuring with tag teams <laughs> because of the fact that you have high attack range. So it's a pretty cool lane. Yeah, he's going to pick up a headdress as his first item, kind of just trying to help out his Tusk and enable the Tusk to sustain the lane, because honestly, I don't really think he's going to get pressured too much in this lane. I think it's mostly a situation of like he'll get nuked a little bit by silencer but for the most part he's just kind of healing up this tusk with the headdress and he's just putting a lot of pressure onto the silencer and the specter because of the fact that tusk can go in over and over again. So the first real timing on Coddle that allows you to start flash farming and really start to be annoying is level 3 Illuminate. The reason why level 3 Illuminate is particularly strong outside of the fact that it is you know <laughs> just a really high damage nuke at 395 damage you know that is a uh, definitely a high number this is the first point where you one shot the range creep so essentially it allows you to really push out the creep wave without risk of killing your own range creep because level two blast just barely puts it in deny range and so with level two blast you actually have to hit the range creep once and then right then blast and that can push you out of position right that one little second where you step up especially you know at the pro level is going to be the point of the game where you just get caught out and potentially die but yeah you can blast the wave twice and this is going to put a lot of pressure on the on the raindrops of specter he's nearly out no tangos left and so Coddle becomes very annoying at this point also because of the fact that chakra magic gives you 160 mana once you have it level two and that's enough for an entire illuminate so throughout the next few minutes of the lane Zai actually plays much different than I would have expected he starts by side pulling two creeps just trying to deny them off and you know eventually farm up the camp but what's really surprising to me is I kind of expected him to drag the creep wave from between the tier one and tier two because of the fact that the enemy mid is not really a ganking mid death prophet is very unlikely to gank right and so that's something you want to keep in mind when you're playing the off lane. Can I drag the creep wave in from in between the tier one and tier two to be efficient based on the enemy mid, right? Or maybe the enemy support, you know, if they have a 
clockwork, you have to be much more careful if you're going to be trying to drag the wave because of the fact that the hero is very good at stopping it. So yeah, he's going to end up side pulling here. And, and from there, he actually puts a lot of pressure on Spectre. Like instead of just playing to flash farm and make stacks and so on and so on, he's actually playing to really just blast in the wave. Now, TA2000 does an incredible job on the Spectre here of avoiding these blasts, but Zai keeps going from different <laughs> angle to angle, trying to blinding light him because when you cast your ultimate, if, for anyone who doesn't really understand Coddle, when you use spirit form, it does a couple of things. It gives you movement speed, it gives you bonus cast range, it gives you heal on your illuminate as we talked about, but it also grants you blinding light. And when you use illuminate, you don't have to channel it. You just put it on the ground and then you're separate from your illuminate. You can let it go whenever you don't have to stand still essentially. Right, so what it allows you to do is click illuminate, then click blinding light, and then you can push them into that illuminate, right? And so that's what Zai was trying to do there, and I, I just didn't expect it. However, I can kind of see it. Blinding light is on 100 damage new. Illuminate does 395 at this point in the game. So that's 495 magic damage, right? I mean, a ridiculous amount of damage. So most safe laners just simply cannot sustain being blasted off cooldown. So I can see where Zai is coming from. He just thinks that if I blast this guy enough, I'll eventually be able to kick him out of lane. Now, unfortunately, this Spectre is a god gamer and avoids almost all of them, and Zai messes up a little bit and isn't able to blast him actually into uh, the, the Illuminates, but still, they force some rotations, they kind of make the enemy team panic, and he drops TA2000 low, which is eventually going to kind of boot him out of lane, and that was the end goal. So I love what Zai does next. He picks up his mech, which is the main timing on this hero. He's level eight. I actually kind of like the concept of skipping a point in Chakra Magic, to take a point in Solar Bind. I just think Solar Bind is actually a quite good ability. It makes every single spell on the target do 20% extra damage, right? And that's a lot. For seven seconds, it's a ton. And they also get slowed uh, more and more depending on how much they move. And so its ability is actually quite good. Uh, the cast range is not bad at 700 as well. So it's just something to keep in mind, especially if your team is a ton of magic damage, then the Solar Bind has a lot of synergy. But yeah, he's gonna walk mid here. And really what I like about this is he has a Drow, which is a carry hero that cannot farm in dangerous areas. So the Drow does not want to farm top where the enemy team uh, is currently sitting. Drow is a hero that wants to leave the lane where the pressure is. Some carries like Naga Siren, Terror Blade, Morphling, because of the fact that they have either illusions or survivability, they can farm the dangerous farm. But this game, that's not an option. Drow can't do that uh, at all, right? And so Zai is going to give her the bottom side of the map. And now using this mech timing, he's just going to run around. And the first objective they get is these massive triangle stacks. I cannot believe Order to Thunder did not contest this, frankly. Like, maybe they didn't know. I, maybe they didn't expect it. I don't know. But now they end up getting a triple stack of large camp and a triple stack of ancients. And really, what I've been learning more and more from some of the pros that I've been watching is rotating on your first major timing. While it might seem like a very simple idea, I've noticed that a lot of them, when they have their, their crimson, their mech, they're going to walk mid and look to make a play. The other option is to also smoke mid and try to make a play that way as well. Another thing that offlane Coddle is extremely good at is defending the mid tower. Also keep in mind at level 10, you get an illuminate cooldown talent, and this is one of his best talents. This was given to him relatively recently, uh, actually part of a set of nerfs, funny enough, but um, this was one of the buffs he got to kind of offset some of the major nerfs he was receiving. And so now at level 10, your hero becomes really obnoxious, especially when it comes to defending the mid tower. I mean, look at that blast on the Tidehunter just chunking his HP pool and preventing this first exo usage or one of the first exo usages to actually take the tower. And so anytime you're playing Coddle, if you're going to pick it in the offlaner, even play it as a support, it's very important that instead of just playing the flash farm, even though he was pushing in top, you actually put a higher priority on defending towers because your hero is just so good at it. It's zero risk. Your cast range is way too high. It clears the entire wave near, not exactly one blast, but nearly one blast and one blast and one blinding light actually does clear the wave. Now, upcoming here is the clip where Zai is able to save Nisha. What ends up happening is Rubik stole Glimpse, and Glimpse on Rubik is extremely powerful due to the added cast range. It's really easy to use. And so Amar ends up glimpsing Nisha. I don't think they realized or Nisha realized he had a Glimpse. But what Zai is going to do is channel and illuminate on top of the SF. This is good for two pretty obvious reasons. It's going to do a lot of damage on the people who are lining up to go on SF. And on top of that, it's going to heal the SF. And it might not seem like enough to save them. And a lot of the time, it definitely might feel that way. But in this case, it certainly is the difference. Because he got illuminated, he was able to get off his magic wand. And that gives him 
barely enough HP with the help of the Illuminate and the Magic Wand, SF's able to get off his Requiem and save himself. They just barely don't do enough damage on the side of Thunder, and yeah, the Tidehunter ends up falling as a result, and now they've wasted major spells, they get a glimpse onto the Death Prophet, that's followed up by an Illuminate, and now the Death Prophet dies as well. And this is why Liquid is such a good team. Their synergy and their ability to play together, it's just incredible. They have such a strong understanding of how to abuse their timings, and honestly, they also are just mechanically really consistent, right? Zai immediately understanding where to channel the Illuminate, saves up Nisha. Nisha doesn't panic and gets off his ulti, which a lot of players probably wouldn't have realized that they could live, and they wouldn't even have tried to ulti. And yeah, it just sets up for a mid tower. They steal another ancient stack, which is so sad. I feel so bad for Thunder this game. Oh my. And yeah, they're off to the races and Greaves are now completed. And from there, I definitely like the build Zai is going. I think the typical best way to play this hero is just an aura buyer. I think some other builds that are not bad our Vessel feels pretty good on this hero. It synergizes as well with the cast range and the Solar Bind. I'm a big fan of actually going Atos to some extent on this hero. The bonus cast range with Spirit Form makes it very easy to set up with it. It also allows you to reliably hit your Illuminate, which is definitely a pretty big deal. So if you pick Offlane Caudal and your team is like, we don't have a stun, you can go something like Mech into Atos and it's going to kind of round out your, your team a bit and make Illuminate much more reliable. Now from there, what Zai ends up doing is being the guy who clears the waves. It's no surprise that Coddle is one of the best heroes in the game at doing this, but if you weren't aware, Coddle is the wave clear guy. He also tends to be the jungle and stack taker guy, uh, especially if he's played mid with like boots of travel, but I really like what Zai does this game. I mean, I didn't even show you the last few minutes, but even when his team was- actually, I'll show it to you guys quickly. Even when his team was pushing bottom, so you'll see, Dra has Aegis, and she's actually going to go attempt the bottom tier 2 tower. This is a big risk because there's actually nowhere for Zai to TP to at all, right? There's no outpost. Where are you going to TP if they go in your drow? The tier one mid, the tier one bottom? I mean, that's not that close. And so he's actually just kind of bluffing, but this is what his hero does best. Because of the fact that he can clear waves without actually showing on the map, it takes the enemy a while to kind of realize the information he's giving them, right? I, I know this might seem a bit weird or maybe it's hard to understand, but often pro teams, if you show top, they're probably going to make a play bottom if you're also showing bottom. They're going to know they have a four on five, right? They have the numbers advantage. And so Zai is able to clear out top without showing, or at least without showing for extended periods of time. And that makes it very hard for Thunder to read where he is. That allows him to also protect the tier two top, get his farm up while his team has taken an objective. And so it's just a great play. He also continues to clear out the waves and his team just never has to really show. SF and Drow can put their priority on staying out of vision, staying out of sight, and killing neutrals while he clears up the more dangerous creep waves. And so as I was kind of saying, you just want to continue to clear in the waves and work towards that next aura item or team item. He's going to be looking for a four staff next, at least that's what he has queued up, and it certainly makes a lot of sense. But yeah, just brief point, when you're playing this hero, Blinding Light plus Illuminate kills the waves, so you always want to pop your ulti generally as much as you can and uh, one shot the creep waves. And here is a true example of why this hero becomes so ridiculous at some point in the game. You know what I mean? I mean, if your team gets ahead, aura items are just so broken. Like, I kind of talked about this a, a little bit yesterday, but uh, I definitely feel like this video is a bit different. And I, I still just want to show you guys, like, the power of hitting these timings, especially if you missed yesterday's video about Underlord. I recommend you go check it out. Pretty similar to Coddle in a lot of ways and definitely a cool concept I wanted to bring to you guys this week. Tusk gets gone on immediate heal. I mean, a massive heal, right? Massive heal. Because the Illuminate at this point is doing 500, right? Of course, 60% of that is 300. So he gets healed for 300 health, which is a ton, right? 300 pure damage, if you want to look at it that way. Then he pipes up the, the Tusk. That's going to give him 450 magic block. Pipe is so much magic block, actually. 450. Also giving him 15% magic resist, uh, which is, you know, helpful as well. Then grieves him up. And and the enemy committed five heroes on Tusk, no joke, five heroes, and he is missing a third of his health. And then they all die because they get glimpsed and they committed every spell on a support Tusk and he didn't die. And that's kind of why you're buying four staff next. One of the downsides of four staff is the current cast range issues of the item. But with Caudal, when your ulti is active at level 12, you get 250 cast range, which sort of alleviates all the problems when it comes to cast range on four staff. All right, and that's going to be about all for today's video as we're going to see Thunder take one more last ditch smoke here. All right, they don't want to give up yet, but uh, unfortunately, the Illuminate comes out just decimating the enemy side. He's going to pipe and greaves up his support once again, making Disruptor unkillable. 
And yeah, that is absolutely the end of this game. <laughs> Solar Bind is also a great spell too. Like, unfortunately, this game, there's not much synergy with the 35% magic resistance reduction that you get from Solar Bind, but some games, just the amp you get from this W is very undervalued. It's actually a part of the hero that I think most people kind of just forget even exists. They kind of see Solar Bind as just a slow, and in my opinion, it's just like a giga veil. You know what I mean? It's, it's two veils, which is, I mean, insane actually it's part of the reason why i think the two solar vine charges at 15 is heavily underrated it's tough to argue against chakra magic cooldown that's obviously just an incredible talent um for if you don't understand why it just lowers the cooldown of solar vine and illuminate it really just enables you to farm more push in more waves heal more you know what i mean so it's tough to argue against it also just you can give it to your teammates more often as we see him give it to nisha here uh, allowing it to be used more raises but yep yeah, the solar vine charges are very good if you're to enemy are very good if your team does a ton of magic damage. But alright, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. By the way, this hero has recall, which is something I always forget. <laughs> like, you just got the shard from Roche, and I always forget that you get this, because it's insane. Like, this ability is, is pretty wild. Just being able to TP anyone to you is, like, actually ridiculous. It's only on a 15 second cooldown as well, so, like, in 15 seconds, you can bring two teammates to you. I mean, that's, that's why, well, 18 seconds, I guess, but... You get the point. All right. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. And I'm out. Peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below. And I'm out. Peace.